It's interesting times for Nigel Farage's Eurosceptic party, UKIP. Riding high in domestic polls and widely touted to win the most seats for a UK party in next year's European elections, the party has recently appointed controversial former Conservative MP Neil Hamilton as its elections campaign manager. I recently had the chance to interview Hamilton for EU Reporter to see where he thinks his new party is going. Well, I'm not suggesting I'm going to improve the campaign particularly, but it's going to be a much bigger campaign than we've ever been able to mount before because in the last two years in particular, UKIP has by common consent become a mainstream political party, not just a fringe pressure group. And that means a, a step change in the way the public at large sees us and how we have to respond to that. And we are uh, generally regarded by the media as being the front runners in the European elections campaign for May next year. And I mean, that's a pretty remarkable achievement for a party which didn't even exist 20 years ago, and to all intents and purposes, in its current form, has existed for just a couple of years or three years or so um, as a, a major performer in the political spectrum. Controversy. UKIP has attracted a certain amount already, it's fair to say, thanks to the forthright views that some of your members have expressed, such as Godfrey Bloom. Do you feel that tighter controls in the run-up to the elections will be necessary on your members, and will you be able to implement such controls? We're not a Stalinist body. Uh, UKIP is uh, a party which can tolerate a, a much wider range of eccentricity than the, the major parties of the past could do. Um, and we certainly don't want to stamp out uh, people's uh, opinions uh, so long as uh, they're not offensive or, or unlawful. Um, nobody knowing the facts of the Godfrey Bloom case uh, could, I think, fairly uh, criticise him for what he, he, he did or, or said. Uh, the big problem with Godfrey was that he hasn't really learned to cope with the changed position that UKIP is now in. Uh, in as much as the media are paying far more attention to what we're saying. And therefore, we, we, we must be aware that we, in our own personal conduct, we mustn't obscure the main message which UKIP wants to convey. Um, now, at our conference in London in September, uh, Godfrey was responsible for a number of unfortunate incidents, <laughs> which uh, uh, were in themselves utterly trivial but they were blown up out of all proportion, completely dominated the, the news, which otherwise would have been about our conference. So it, we got virtually no coverage for the conference itself. All the news coverage was, was Godfrey. Nigel Farage is clearly a leading force in your party, a figurehead, if you like. Will it be part of your campaign to perhaps focus more on other figures within the party? Nigel Farage is, is a political star by universal consent. He's a, a magnificent performer on a platform, on, on the stump in election campaigns, on television. He speaks the language of ordinary people. They can empathise with him and, and uh, they feel that he does represent them, whereas so many politicians represent their parties against the people. Uh, UKIP is a kind of peasant's revolt. You know, we're a spontaneous uprising of resentment uh, uh, of the people at the way they've been treated by politicians of all the old parties over the last 30 years or, or more. Um, and it's true that uh, the media want Nigel um, first and foremost. Uh, sometimes they have to make do with them. Um, uh, ersatz alternatives like me but uh, but uh, undoubtedly I mean he is the star performer of UKIP and, and is our USP in a sense but we are also in the process of, uh, of maturing as a party and others are coming forward like Diane James who's done several successful um, uh, stints on Question Time and uh, other programs Paul Nuttall who's um, uh, the deputy leader and an MEP in the northwest of England uh, speaks with a broad Scouse accent, which is something that uh, people are often surprised to discover that we do we do have people who come from the working classes, unlike the other major parties. There are very few horny-handed sons of the toil in the Labour Party today. Um, and uh, uh, so, uh, well, indeed, absolutely. Uh, 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 and uh, so we, uh, you will see in the course of the election campaign in the next six months, that, uh, other people will become more prominent in the media. Uh, Nigel can't do everything, for one thing, and uh, although he is ubiquitous, n n there will be a huge amount of, of media coverage of UKIP, inevitably, because in the European election, it is actually all about the rise of UKIP. You are a former 
Conservative MP yourself, uh, it would appear that the Conservative Party is probably the most vulnerable to losing votes to UKIP. How do you feel about this? Well, it, uh, don't blame me for David Cameron. Um, he's he's the, the author of the, of the uh, Conservative Party's misfortune. Uh, mm. it, he decided when he became Conservative leader that he would make war upon his uh, own long-standing traditionalist members. And uh, he's very successfully done that. In fact, um, you know, he's killed most of them politically. They've left his party. Uh, the membership of the Conservative Party is, is a tattered rump of about 100,000. In uh, Those are their figures. My guess is it would be a good deal less than that, whereas it was 300,000 when Cameron took over as, as leader. Uh, I think the you know, Conservatives in this country think that their party has left them, not the other way around. Uh, and UKIP has, of course, been a beneficiary of that. Uh, we're also a beneficiary of the fact that the Liberal Party, the traditional party of protest, is now part of the establishment and part of the government, so they bear, for the first time in 100 years, responsibility for the government's decisions and can't uh, seek refuge, as they have traditionally done in different parts of the country, by saying different things to different audiences uh, and blaming the government uh, in all, all parts of the country uh, because they are part of it. Uh, and also the rising Euroscepticism of the British public, which is, hasn't entirely been fermented by U UKIP. UKIP is a, is a reaction to all this, not the cause of it. Uh, so um, the Conservative Party is, I think, dead in the water, and Cameron has no chance whatever of winning the next election. If he couldn't win the last one, he's certainly not going to win the next one, uh, uh, especially as you know, Gordon Brown was his opponent last time. And although David Mil um, Ed, Ed, which one is it? Ed Miliband, isn't it? I keep mixing them up. Um, Ed Miliband um, is, uh, is by no means a formidable opponent. Uh, I think he, he'd be a better campaigner than Gordon Brown was in terms of, uh, of saleability. Uh, so, um, although UKIP has taken votes from the Tories, we're also taking votes from the Labour Party in large numbers. And we know from opinion polls that we've done, in fact, one which we commissioned only this week uh, as part of a series in uh, constituencies where, in the last election, uh, Labour and the Tories were in contention for winning seats. Uh, South Thanet, where the Tory MP has just decided after one term she's had enough and is not standing again, uh, we discovered that 80% of those who uh, say they will vote UKIP in the next general election uh, would not vote Tory if there was no UKIP candidate. Only 20% of those who say they will vote for us in 2015 uh, would vote for the Tories if there wasn't a UKIP candidate. 80% of our supporters would vote for other parties or not vote at all. So uh, it, it's a misconception which um, has grown up in the last couple of years because of the disgruntled Conservatives coming over to UKIP uh, as a reaction against what the government is doing. Obviously, nobody pays too much attention about what the opposition is doing, but they've been hemorrhaging votes as well. 